Yes, class. Am I audible to all of you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Who is this? Aliza. Aliza. Yes, this is your first class? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Fia, where were you? You did not attend that class? Yes, ma'am. I was out last class. Also, you are one more thing I have noticed. Hafza gave the test. Devora also gave the test. Here, you have not attempted any after class assessment. I, I, I don't know, ma'am. Your progress here. You don't know that you have not attempted any after class assessment. I will attend from uh, today. As uh, last class only, I know just how to attend it, like how to go and log in everything. Please attempt the class test. After class assignments are based upon whatever you study. You people must have noticed it. The questions are based upon the topic that has been completed in that class. This after class assessment is not a part of your record. For your records, you are having a particular test. You will have tests on Friday. On Fridays, you will be given a. I'll give you the syllabus. The learning your team will inform you the syllabus, and you will have the class proper class exam on Fridays. These are that will be added in your report card that will be reported to your parents. This is not after class assessment. These small five mark questions are not repeated. They are not reported in the uh, app or every score, even if you are scoring a less marks. So that doesn't make a difference because that just helps to evaluate how much you have understood a particular topic. And Fia, magnetics class also you didn't attend. Otherwise, you will miss on the portions, right? You yes, are... ma'am. I informed the team before itself that I would not be able to attend. I messaged uh, the team, ma'am. Okay, okay. I asked them to give me the recorded class. They said, oh, okay, yes, yes. please take the recording because the portion oh, which I was mentioning in the last slide, that has been covered. So please take that. and Which portion, ma'am? Uh, Today's portion, ma'am? galvanometer into ammeter and motor, that part that is important because the next portion that is for the fifth lesson that i'll do tomorrow so you'll be able to see tomorrow only that will be ma'am uh, whatever recordings i have to see can you just uh, send through the team like can you say to the team they'll send you just contact to the number no whichever number you are having through which you get the meeting id just text them they'll because they edit the video and then they upload it also and then they share it I have no links with me. So just contact to them directly. They'll share all the recordings with you. Same with you, Fadil. Two videos uh, have been two classes. That also you check. You, how's your inter internet connection now? Is it fine? Uh, yeah, it's better. It's better. All right. So yeah. two topics class we have already covered. Aliza, this, for you also, this is, a, this is your first class. Fadil is also first class. This is. So I had a talk with Sadil earlier, 15 to 20 minutes prior. I did not know about you. So otherwise I would have called you also. It's just that I uh, wanted to brief about whatever portions have been covered in this class. This is a new batch. So a lot of portion has not been covered. We have just covered electric charge and the properties of it and methods of charging. Secondly, we have covered Coulomb's law. So briefly, we had I had a talk with Fadil also regarding electric charge. Electric charge is a basic quantity, intrinsic property of matter, or you can say fundamental property that gives rise to various, various phenomena. In your school also, uh, yes, Aliza, one more thing that I had, uh, I wanted to ask. Aliza, before your summer vacations, how many portions have been covered in the school? Ma'am, um, I'm in dummy. Okay, okay, fine. Then the syllabus is according to you, right? Yes. Okay. So no exam you have to give in between? No, ma'am, only bones. Only. And I go to like a flying coaching. That's okay, it. Okay. Fine. Then it's good. So now it's good for you. Now you will be coping up with one type of syllabus. Only. You don't need to manage two types of syllabus. One going in school, one in going over here. Good. Then. See class. Secondly, we discussed Coulomb's law. So Coulomb's law, basically Coulomb's law says if you are having two charges, Q1 is there, Q2 is there, any type of charge can exist. It can be positive, both can be negative, one can be negative, one can be positive. Two types of charges are existing in your system. Whenever I use the term magnitude, what is meant by magnitude? 
इफ आई गिव यू चार्ज इज इक्वल टू माइनस थ्री कूलम आउट ऑफ इट मैग्नीट्यूड मैग्नीट्यूड इज जस्ट दिस नंबर थ्री यू डू नॉट कंसिडर प्लस माइनस चार्ज माइनस साइन If I give you charge as plus three coulomb, still the magnitude will be three only. Magnitude means just the number, because students will commit this error. They consider minus sign in coulomb's law. So that's why I want to brief this. So magnitude means just the number, without any sign, without any units. That is what is meant by magnitude. So electric force, according to coulomb's law, electric force is directly proportional to Yes, two points we had. Fia, first point. Yes, ma'am. Q one uh, is directly proportional to the charges. It is directly proportional to charges. Just this. Magnitude of charges. Magnitude of product of charges. Product of charges. Very good. That is Q one's magnitude multiplied to Q two magnitude. This we have done. Secondly, uh, Hafsa, second point. It's directly proportional to the square of the distance. Directly. Ah, uh, sorry, inversely proportional. This is inversely proportional to square of the distance. So when we remove the proportionality sign, we put a constant. We get Q one Q two divided by R square. When we put a constant, we get this. Now K is equal to one over four pi epsilon naught. Whose value is nine into ten to the power n. Now this k will be with us in electric field also when we'll be discussing electric field. So this was Coulomb's law. Now as soon as the things will come, I'll keep on discussing in it, it in between. Right now, let us start with electric field. Electric field we should complete it in today's class only. Then your syllabus will be stable. See electric field. Best way to understand electric field is through an example. Suppose I have a charge. The borer is audible to you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. See, I have a charge plus Q charge. I have taken. Now, what is happening? This charge, this is known as. I am calling this charge as a source charge. Now, why this charge is called a source charge? This charge is stationary. It won't move. I am not going to move this charge. I have taken. Plus Q charge, and I have kept it here like this. Just a hypothetical example to understand electric field. Not right. Plus Q, I have kept. Now what I am noticing, as I am bringing this charge, I have a small charge which I am calling it as the test charge. This charge is called the test test charge. Now as soon as I am bringing this, this is small Q. This is plus Q, capital Q. Source charge, test charge. Now, as soon as I am bringing this here closer, I am noticing nothing is happening. And again, I am bringing it closer. Again, I am noticing nothing is happening. No force of attraction, repulsion, no magnetic property, no electric property. Nothing is being mentioned. But as soon as I am, I am bringing it here. I am able to see a force, force of attraction or repulsion. Right now, according to this case, I am able to see force of repulsion as I am bringing it here. Here, there was nothing. I wasn't able to experience any forces of attraction or repulsion, but as soon as it is brought over here, there is a sudden force experience. So this, there is a shelter, there is a field around this charge, into the vicinity of which the test charge is able to experience forces of repulsion or attraction. Right? Before that, no other charge was. Able to show any forces of attraction or repulsion. As soon as this Q is brought over here, this test charge is brought over here. This is able to execute because of the whatever potential energy is there in between kinetic energy is here. We are not concerned about it. What we are concerned with, we are concerned with, is the force that is being generated. An electric force is occurring that is pushing it away. But when it was here, there wasn't any force. It means around every charge, there is an atmosphere, there is a space, there is a field under which only electrical properties exist. Electrical properties exist means forces of attraction or forces of repulsion can be felt. And rest of the uh, after effects, that is a different thing. What electric field is giving rise to? 
but what electric field is exactly is the space around the charge in which you can feel properties of repulsion or attraction that is basically electrical properties are experienced this is what is meant by electric field if it's around a positive charge it's around a negative charge see one thing class whenever we have charges plus q minus q all the charges are present so every charge can exist independently take the example of electron electrons do exist independently protons do exist independently you don't uh, a proton does not need the uh, presence or existence of an electron to be present right electrons can exist themselves protons can exist themselves so this is known as monopole monopolarity monopolarity of charges this is present in electrostatics means charges are able to exist independently and if they are existing independently they are having certain field around themselves and that field is what we call as the electric field now electric field for a point charge when we have to find out uh yes certain properties of it it is there to explain the non contact forces see there are certain contact forces you people have come from class 11th in class 11th in laws of motion and all this lesson uh you have heard of a force which is known as normal reaction friction force all these forces you have heard of these are all the contact forces normal reaction comes into action whenever the body is in contact with an object so perpendicular force occurs which is known as the normal reaction right it's a contact force but if i am able to experience a force from here no two quantities were in contact no external force was applied friction force can't also act over here normal reaction is also not possible so what type of force is this it means this is non contact force so it electric field basically tells you that there has there are not only the contact forces which exist in the chain there are non contact forces also which exist and to explain that to prove that as an evidence we have electric field right so that is what is meant by the second point to explain non contact forces concept of electric field is required and one very good important property of electric field is that it travels with the speed of light what is the speed of light value 6 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second any other answer 10 powers are right hamza 6 it's not it's 3 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second c class after this class this value should be forgotten right now in this lesson particular questions when we'll deal you'll not see very much usage of speed of light but as soon as the class will progress as soon as you will be practicing questions by yourself also you will notice speed of light is required everywhere so speed of light shouldn't be missed by anyone of you 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second just remember what all data you have to remember till now till today's class first electronic charge how much how much of charge is held by a single electron that is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb plus for proton minus for electron this value second the value of constant k dielectric constant which is 9 into 10 to the power 9 that value third epsilon not permittivity of free space or air 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12 now in today's class we have added one more quantity speed of light 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second these four till today's class you have to remember because these won't be mentioned anywhere and in the calculations you will be needing yourself but and speed of light you in your lessons also ray optics and all they are just based upon speed of light all right so yes 3 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second is the speed of light and so is the speed of electric field and electric field is the electric field is the property of at least one charge this i have explained you it means monopolarity exists in charge that right? you have a single electron which is present single proton which is present single elements elementary particles are existing in it so these elementary particles by themselves can hold independent electric field see when we talk about electric force if i just have one charge with me will i be able to attract any other charge if no other charge is present i just have plus q only plus q 
only plus two, there are no other charges present. And I want Coulombic force. According to you, do you think I can calculate Coulombic force with just plus Q? Yes or no? No, ma'am. No, we won't be no, able to calculate. It will violate the rule, the fundamentals of the rule it by itself. I have to have one more charge. Minimum one charge is required. And maximum two charges are required for electric uh, Coulomb's law. One, char one more charge has to exist in nature so that force of attraction or force of repulsion can be experienced, right? Here also we had seen the example, forces of attraction or repulsion were felt when two charges came. So electric force is not a property of at least one charge. It is a property of minimum two charges. But electric field, potential, whatever quantities will now come, they'll be existing independently. So that is what is meant by property of at least one charge. Do one thing, class. Uh, write down from here, make a separate heading, electric field. For all those who are new, just take the link of the lessons that have been missed by, you know, the two classes. Just take the video lectures. There you will find the notes. Write it, complete it also. And one more thing I'll repeat in this class again. Do not waste your time in searching for the notes or stop making notes by yourself. In the class, write down everything whenever I give you sufficient time to write it down. When I am teaching, do not write down anything. I give you enough time. According to everyone's speed, I'll slow down. All right. But these notes are sufficient for you. Just go through these notes whatever types of questions, because in the class I keep telling, this is important, this is unimportant. Mark them, then and there only. Okay, so make a separate heading, electric field, note it down, then I'll discuss some more points. Ma'am, so electric field is a contact force, but with that we can explain non-contact force. No, no, electric field, see electric field is not a force. Electric force is different, electric field. Electric field is just like an atmosphere. It's it is just, just a, space. a space. It is just a space where properties are existing. Okay. All right. It explains okay. non-contact forces. Hmm? Whenever the new charge was brought, the test charge was brought, automatically without contact, it got repelled, right? So it means it is explaining yes, that in system, yes, non-contact forces also exist. Like without okay. even getting in contact, force was experienced. Electric field is not a force. Electric force is, force is separate.
Ma'am, can you scroll down? This is it, just right till here. Takes me done in the chat column once you people have done, and I'll start this. This is a different topic. Completed, all of you? One second, ma'am. Um, excuse me, ma'am. Yes, Fadil, sir. Uh, ma'am, can you explain the last point again, please? This uh, property of at least one charge, this one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, see, this means what? Uh, let's talk about forces, all right? Let's say I have two forces, two charges in it. Q1, Q2. Right. When Q1 and Q2 are brought near, with a certain separation r, we are able to notice that force exists, coulombic force is existing, right? Mm. Now, if I remove this q1 charge, I have thrown it, this is out of universe, there is no other charge, just q1. Can you calculate coulombic force now? No, ma'am. You will not be able to calculate it, right? You are right. dependent upon the second charge for coulombic second force, charge. right? So it means right. it is a property of two charges. But electric field, even if I have thrown the second charge, I just have a one single charge in my hand. That will be having electric field. That field will be, that uh, confined space will be there with just one charge also. So that is that means this is property of at least one charge. Means even one charge is there in your system, electric field can exist independently. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the point that Priya, you were asking regarding non-contact forces and whether electric field is a force or not. See, you can define electric field as a force. This will come in the next section. So pay attention over here. What your doubt was no, regarding the forces part. See, if I have brought a charge, plus Q is there. This is what? This is my source charge. Why am I calling it source charge? Mean this is stationary. I am moving the test charge. No, for the test. Source charge is stationary. Why source? Because it is the source of generating electric field. This field, this, this, this sphere that is being generated, this sphere is actually the sphere of plus Q only. Now I have brought a test charge. I have brought a test charge. Now we are noticing that there is a force that is experienced by this. Electric field is here, electric force is here. They are physically two different quantities. This I have told you. Force is something else. Field is just a space. It's like under this space, electrostatism is existing. So if you bring a chart, you'll be able to feel force of attraction or repulsion, out of which nothing is happening. But now how can you relate it? How can you call, call electric field as a force? The answer to this is, see, Electric field, if I tell you, uh, one more thing that I didn't mention, electric field is a vector quantity. So keep in mind, I'll write down this also, electric field is a vector quantity, not a scalar. Force was also a vector, electric field is also a vector. Now limiting, let me make this charge Q a very small value. Limit Q tends to zero. Those students who have mathematics, you will understand this part better, why Q tends to zero is being done. This means charges value can be great, but I have reduced the value to a very small value, right? This you can eliminate also in the further steps. This is force experienced. 
what have what did we notice over here we had noticed that there was force experienced by the test charge what conclusions can you make through this experiment if i ask you you will just tell no there was a force experienced by this test charge so if there is a force experienced by the test charge how can you write it force experienced by test charge why am i writing q tends to zero see understand this all why is this limit q tends to zero written in such a different manner plus tell me one thing if plus q is existing of is making a force on small q uh, instead of capital q small q let me use the term source charge and test charge so you will have an idea source one is capital and test one is small so source is existing a force on test this is what we could notice but why are we not considering that the forces test is making on the source test charge would also no exist certain force this is also a charge it doesn't if i just write it in small letter and make that in capital so that doesn't change the value it is a charge it will exist a force also then what will happen if a force of repulsion is given by plus q then this will move yes plus q which was stationary source it was stationary it was fixed if small plus q is also existing forces this will start repelling but then how will we conclude how will we do the experiments we want this to be static so what we can do if we make plus q a very the test charge a very small very small charge so the effect of electric force that will it will have on the capital q source charge they'll be negligible right it won't move because the magnitude of the force generated by test charge this is very small so plus q will remain static and we'll be able to move small q so that now we can do our experiments we can make our conclusions is this clear so that's why in the equation we are writing limit q tends to zero just so that we make sure that the force generated by small q is negligible and hence capital q cannot move till this point is it clear to all of you yes ma'am okay good so what is the formula right now this is you don't have to write down this everywhere limit q tends to zero uh in your ncrt this is mentioned the significance of limit tends to q nowhere in the question i have ever seen in your board exam the significance of this is asked in your viva and your especially students who uh, will take their investigative projects and all from this topic for you it can be asked in your viva somewhere sometimes the sheet are mentioned is the sheets are given pen is given write down what is the significance of this formula or the formula the examiner will write and he will ask you what is the significance of this like this so this is just for your viva in the exams now where this question has come but you should know it's a part of your syllabus it's mentioned in ncrt so you should be aware of why even this limit q tends to zero is given and specifically this formula in this manner also limit q uh, tends to zero is mentioned in your textbook so you should be aware of it all right now every time we cannot write it once we have mentioned it's enough so what is the formula ultimate formula of electric field is force per unit charge this is the main formula now i have told you this is a vector quantity vector quantity this is specified second thing the si unit yes aliza what is the si unit of force do you remember si unit of force mm, newton newton very good Deborah, can you tell me SI unit for charge? Just look in the first class. You have written SI unit for charge. We have been using it constantly. Ma'am, may? Uh, yes, father. It's coulomb, is it? Coulomb. Very good. Cool. Yeah. So this is coulomb. So elect and yes. Now, anyone who remembers the CGS unit of electric charge. because it's not very common i have told you nowhere in rarely it's given in the questions it's electrostat unit either esu electrostat unit is mentioned or stat coulomb all right just for your knowledge for father and aliza you people will see that in the video lecture but for those who have missed hafza devora fia or the other electrostat unit or stat coulomb 
Deborah, now is the unit clear? Now will you remember? Deborah. Ma'am, I did not even hear you call my name. Okay, okay. Internet issues are there? I don't know. Sometimes you just, I did not hear you. Okay, so it's maybe because of the connectivity issues. Okay, so electric fields, SI unit. When we talk about the SI unit, this is Newton divided by Coulomb. So we'll mention it as Newton per Coulomb. So SI unit is Newton per Coulomb. Now, class, there is not only just single SI unit of Newton per Coulomb. We will we'll be using this commonly. You have one more that is volt per meter. This will come through a different formula in your potentialism. That there we see. Now, coming back to the point which you had asked, which I had started with Fia, you were asking regarding the force. So, how can we say electric? How can you relate electric field and force? See, class, if somehow I'm able to make the value of charge as plus one coulomb. There are so many charges that are existing. One coulomb, two coulomb, three coulomb, four coulomb, five coulomb. Out of all the charges which are existing, I have taken plus one coulomb. Fine. I have the charge whose magnitude is plus one coulomb. Fine. If the charge's magnitude is plus one coulomb, what will be now left in this formula? Can anyone see and tell me? Make Q as one. Ma'am, then electric field will be equal to the force uh, itself. Good. Electric field, then it will be equal to the force. So the now, force itself, right. yes. so now we have made electric field equal to the force. So the how can you now define electric field? One definition we had studied in the starting of class that it's a space around the charge where this can exist, that can exist, right? But in terms of force, how can you define now? Now, how can you define electric field is the force experienced by a unit positive test charge. Unit, unit means one, positive, and this is a test charge. Unit positive test charge. This is how can you define electric field also. These are the two ways in which you can define electric field. And uh, regarding the direction of electric field. See, electric, whatever is the direction of electric force, same is the direction of electric field. Exactly the same direction is the direction of electric field. All right. So, yes, it's written out. So electric field is a vector quantity. Its direction is same as that of force experienced by the test charge. And, uh, yes, electric field at a point can also be defined as the force experienced by unit positive test charges. All these points we have discussed. Now we'll practice some numericals, but before that, make the heading electric field strength. Uh, yes, this, this formula, no, E is equal to F by Q. This is also sometimes asked in your exam with a different name. Electric field intensity, electric field strength, electric flux density. Either of these terms, if they are used, the same formula E is equal to F by Q will be used. Force per unit. Practice one. Let's we'll practice one question, then we'll see what is the electric field for a point charge. But right now, this is fine. Whatever doubts you people are having, you can unmute yourself and ask also. And the best way, text me in the chat column. In that case, I'll only just read your doubt and I'll then answer. Nobody else is going to hear if you are hesitant. Otherwise, if you're confident, you can unmute yourself and ask.
see uh, v by m this is volt voltage so voltage is si unit is volt and this is meter so we have one formula where voltage voltage we have not studied right now so that's why i don't want to mention it so much this is basically potential difference that occurs potential difference voltage of a battery you can say divided per position means uh, with respect to change in position this is a full fledged topic and a very important topic that we will deal uh, in the next lesson but just have an idea that the, not just newton per coulomb is the only si unit for it you have a formula e is equal to minus dv over dr from here we have the formula of voltage per meter one question also let's see this question says that a test charge of 10 to the power minus 3 coulomb experiences a force of 10 to the power 2 newton due to field of a source charge. So what is the test charge's value? 10 to the power minus 3 coulomb. What is the force? Force is 10 to the power 2 newton. Calculate magnitude of the field. So see electric field is what electric field is. Force per experience by a unit test, uh, positive test charge. So, this is equal to force is 10 to the power 2. This is 10 to the power minus 3. When you bring this up, this becomes 10 to the power 2 into 10 to the power 3. Because from denominator, it is going to the numerator. So, power sign changes. So, final electric field value is 10 to the power 5 newton per coulomb. Note it. Then we will see electric field for point charge.
see electric field for a point charge now when we have to find out electric field for a point charge this is just the calculation part theoretically it is the same point charge or a sphere for a sphere also this is valid for point charge this is valid similar to coulomb's law coulomb's law that we write now f is equal to kq1 q2 by r square that is valid for point charges and i have made you write also that uh, point charges or spheres for, not for any other charge so this is our source charge okay. and at a separation r i am having the test charge this derivation is very easy why because look here if i ask you the coulombic force so see how do we write k q1 what is your first charge this then q2 what is your second charge this divided by r square this is from your coulomb's law now the formula of electric field electric field that is limit q tends to zero f divided by q so do not repeat this you can directly write it as f by q only just put vector sign these arrow no on the top of the symbol they represent vectors symbol so just make vectors otherwise it will show that you are just talking about the magnitude okay so wherever magnitude see here i had to write just the magnitude so i didn't put it here i have to write it complete now see what we have to do just substitute the values of force into here this value of force substitute this in here so what do we get uh f by q will become force is k capital q small q divided by r square with this q so this q this q will get cancelled electric field is k q by r square or you can elaborate the value of this constant what is the constant it's 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught so r square and q over here this is the value of electric field 4 pi epsilon naught r square all right one more thing class see how can you remember this electric till now what we have studied coulomb's law is k if both the charges are same k q square by r square when it comes to electric field remove this one q that becomes k q by r when now potential will come one more thing will get reduced right like this it will keep on so keep on remembering this electric field and electric force note down this then we will see the directions for this
now coming to the direction of electric field so see for electric fields uh, direction for a point charge we decided by uh, dividing it into two groups we'll divide first group that is for positive charges and second group for the negative charges all right now for positive charges electric field moves away from the charge and for negative charge electric field will move towards the charge this is just what you have to remember this is same in flux also electric flux when we reach first theorem for example look here plus 2 coulomb charge is given now there are four points so this is a positive charge for positive charge we move away from the charge so this becomes this goes over here electric field the direction of electric field will be here this will be the direction of electric field this will be the direction of electric field away from the charge if this is point c away from the charge will be like this upwards like this electric field for this this will be electric fault field for this you you just have to take the point and move away from where you are calculating all right just away that is the direction that will help you decide talking about negative charges so you have to move towards the charge here you had to move away from the charge here you are moving towards the charge all right now let's take point uh, a so you are moving towards the charge take the point move towards the charge b point take the charge take the point move towards the charge this is electric field a this is electric field b take the point move towards the charge e c take point move towards the charge e like this this is the direction of electric field that is obtained all right um, question is there do one thing quickly just note it down this direction part let's see the question
the question says a point charge of 10 coulomb is placed at the origin you have to calculate electric field at a point 3 comma 0 comma 0 is given and you have to tell the both magnitude also and direction also now see in this case you do not have a particular separation 3 meter 4 meter these are not given how will you solve this now see for all the axes remember this x axis y axis z axis for positive x axis you use plus i cap for negative x axis you use minus i cap Positive y axis you use plus j cap or negative y axis you use minus j cap. Outwards for positive z axis you use plus k cap. Inwards for negative z axis you use minus k cap. Now it is given 3 comma 0 comma 0. 3 comma 0 comma 0. This means this is x, this is y, this is z. Now this means what? At the origin, plus 10 coulomb charge is kept. 3 comma 0 comma 0 means x axis has 3 meter separation. Y axis has 0. Z axis has 0. This means that total separation is 3 meters. And at this point, we have to find out the electric field. So how will we find out the electric field's magnitude? K Q by R square we write. K is 9 into 10 to the power 9. Q is 10 coulomb, R, the separation now becomes 3. So, square of 3 is 9. 9, 9 will get cancelled. Electric fields magnitude will become 10 uh, to the power 10. 10 to the power 10 Newton per coulomb. Now, direction. This is a positive charge. So, this will move away from the charge. That is positive x-axis. Positive x-axis, I have told you, is I cap. So, this is how you will write. I cap is telling you the direction. See, this is telling you the magnitude. And this is telling the direction. Magnitude and direction. All right, this is how you write a complete answer. Note it down.
certain uh, this part is over electric field is over it's just that i won't tell you the graph certain questions are there which are based upon graph so basics of graphs of your class 11th graph is what it's just a uh, pictorial representation of an equation so for linear equation linear equations means when y is directly proportional to x with the power 1 so you get a straight line graph this is a straight line graph when both are directly proportional to each other then uh, you have a parabolic graph that is a quadratic equation means your y is directly proportional to x to the power 2. This is a parabolic graph. So parabolic graph looks like this. Then you have a hyperbolic graph where y is inversely proportional to x, x square, x cube, x to the power 4, x to the power 5 like this, y is inversely proportional to it. Now, as soon as the power keep on increasing, y inversely proportional to x, y inversely proportional to square of x, this it graph becomes deeper, it becomes steeper. This we will see when we will do electric field and potential, there will be a comparison of the graph. Like see here, uh, it gives plot the graph between force versus s in Coulomb's law. What is Coulomb's law? F is equal to k q square by r square. So force is inversely proportional to square of the radius it's similar to y inversely proportional to x square so what type of graph should we obtain we will obtain a yes hyperbolic or parabolic hyperbolic this is the case no so this we obtain a hyperbola so see whenever you have x x square x cube you just use the graph that is inversely proportional graph looks like this this is force and this is radius. Like see this next question. See, it says that force inversely proportional to. Now look here. This is saying force versus 1 by r square. Formula is f is equal to k q square by r square. Can I write it like force as 1 by r square then k q square? Class tell me. This is the same no? Both the equations are same or are they different? They are the same, man. They are the same. It's just that I have separated this term. Now, see, please uh, listen to it carefully. Force is inversely proportional to R square. When we plot the graph between force versus R square, no. Listen, listen, Priya. No. That's the confusion. That's what I'm trying to uh, clear it. It's not hyperbolic this time. Why? Because hyperbolic is when force inversely proportional to r square is there, right? Force is inversely proportional to r square. This is y, this is x. What is your x today uh, in this question? What is your x? This is y, this is x. Is x r square this time or x is 1 by r square? See? It's 1 by r square, not r square, yes. In the previous question, it was r square. So it was y inversely proportional to x square, right? Y inversely proportional to x. So right now, it won't multiply. Yes, it will multiply to kx square. Very good. Yes, that's what I'm trying to tell you. This time, x is this. Remove, remove 1 by r square, remove everything. Just take this as y and x. Write force as y, write 1 by r square as x. This is the best technique to plot the graphs. So remember this technique from now onwards class. Whatever verses verses are given, take one as x, take one as y. First one which is given as y, second one which is given as x. Automatically you will see what's the answer because 1 by r square, r square. See, there's a difference between r square and 1 by r square. r square is in the denominator, but 1 by r square is the entire term. Let's write, instead of force, I will write y. Instead of 1 by r square, I'll write x. And this is the rest of the constant. What am I getting? Y is directly proportional to x. In the previous question, take force as y, take r as x. So this becomes y is equal to kq square by x square. So we are getting the same thing. Here we are getting y directly proportional to x. This means what? Force is directly proportional to 1 by r square. It is directly proportional to 1 by r square. It is inversely proportional to r square. This point is clear to all of you or not? Or should I repeat it? 
clear yes ma'am devora what about you hafsa clear yes ma'am so if it is directly proportional you get a straight line so this is force versus position all right like uh, electric field versus r so e is equal to kq by r square so this is y this is x so that becomes y is equal to kq by x square y is inversely proportional to x square inversely proportional to x square right so when we plot the graph graph becomes this becomes again hyperbolic e versus r this is how you have to plot the graph of the actually all right note down all the graphs quickly from here please uh, text me once you have completed and you have an uh, after class assessment after the class that you will log in into your accounts learnevio portal you have there in your account you will be given a test online only you will solve uh, it will be checked then and there only
done okay okay all those who have completed you people can leave but please attempt the after class assessment on the app all right thank you so much class tomorrow we'll continue the rest thank you ma'am um, ma'am excuse me uh, yes fadil sir ma'am i wanted to ask uh, regarding the timings of the classes uh, classes timings are from 9 to 10:30 then after 10:30 you have the after class assessment 9th uh, 9 okay. pm is ist so this is sorry where do you stay in riyad ma'am riyad so 2.5 hours difference is it yeah 30 i think for you right yeah yeah right is there a, any other time ma'am for this batch because we are having this timing because uh, there are some students are having other classes meanwhile okay so when is the next physics class tomorrow tomorrow same timing tomorrow saturday and sunday we will be having just talk to manager